And welcome back on this 10th day of March, counting down the days left in the third month. On the forecast, you can count on some more of the same, some changes. Not necessarily changes to your predictions and forecast 24 hours ago, just some changes that will be made and continue to take place weather-wise throughout your forecast. We're going to dry out for about a day, and then it's back to another pattern of some showers and storms, temperatures as they have been staying pretty fair, uh, 60s to 70s for most of your forecast period. Uh, we will get close to each end of that spectrum on a couple of occasions as well. Really close to 59, 60 degrees for your Saturday. That's going to be the cool part of your forecast. More on that in just a few moments. Headlines tonight will include several arrests and updates. A Sigersville man arrested for rape and sodomy charges of a victim under the age of 16. A man arrested for threatening a law enforcement officer. Uh, that suspect or individual, a former candidate for sheriff in McGoffin County, uh, it appears, and a host of other news and information to bring you on that front. Uh, also an update on several reports. And I had a segment drop out of the program last night, uh, a few ads and a few reports uh, and some other information, and I think we've got that problem fixed tonight. First time I've ever really had that happen in that particular manner. Uh, a few community calendar announcements also fell victim to that as well, so we'll get to that and a host of birthdays and other things happening on our calendar tonight. It's a call to action. It's based, or I should say centered around, the heroin and opioid epidemic in Metro Louisville. How does that pertain to local headlines? Well, it's a call for that particular part of Kentucky, but it's also a call to law enforcement agencies all across the state. Those two phrases or words or drugs, heroin and opioids, not uncommon to headlines here at this desk. United States Attorney John Kuhn today announced the statewide release of a call to action. It's a 40-page report and document uh, that outlines the heroin and opioid uh, response summit that took place just weeks ago. The nearly 40-page report summarizes information that was shared during the December 1st summit held at the University of Louisville School of Medicine. It was a one-day event hosted by the United States Attorney's Office for the Western District of Kentucky. In conjunction with the DEA, Louisville School of Medicine, and a host of other agencies, it was attended by hundreds of professionals working to fight heroin and opioid abuse in Kentucky, not just in this area. It's one of the most urgent and destructive threats to Metro Louisville's health and safety, and of course it is sprawling into other parts of Kentucky as well. And the summit sought to enhance collaboration across public safety and public health domains and across both private and public sectors to improve the community's response to the crisis. Kuhn says that a call to action, as it's titled, urges intensified efforts in the areas of treatment prevention and law enforcement. And these things that they are discussing for the Louisville area are also going to reach out into other parts of the state. The report made several recommendations of those prevention programs being built upon evidence-based principles uh, should be offered in all of our schools education outreach, or at least all the schools in Louisville initially. Education outreach to the general public concerning opioid risks, addiction, and treatment should be expanded. Law enforcement should improve and intensify efforts to eliminate the supply of heroin and fentanyl, opioid analogs, and diverted pharmaceuticals. And all sectors working on and affected by the heroin and opioid problem should collaborate with each other. That was the, one of the biggest things that came out of the summit, to share data and information even if law or statutes do not mandate them to do so. And it also says that Kentucky should establish a comprehensive centralized drug data collection analysis and sharing system and the recovery support programs and systems should be developed in schools and throughout the community. Who says that only two things can defeat them in the battle against this epidemic, a lack of commitment and a failure to collaborate. There's a ceremony going to be held in the morning in honor of the new selection for president of Moorhead State University. He will become the 14th president effective this first day of July. Dr. Joseph Morgan, J. Morgan, was selected after a nearly year-long search that's been ongoing now for months. He became the top candidate, and the Board of Regents has now voted unanimously, we are told, to 
make him their next president. Uh, that meeting just taking place in vote just days ago. Morgan is currently holding the position of Chief, Chief Academic Officer and Vice President for Academic Affairs and Student Success for the Kentucky Council on Post-Secondary Education. Once again, they're celebrating and honoring him tomorrow at MSU's Button Drill Room at 10 o'clock in the morning. Of course, we have a long history with students going to Morehead State University uh, and a lot of current students, uh, one of my household, headed that way very, very soon. So we'll be maybe keeping up to date with Morehead University's happenings a little more than normal here over the course of the next several years. Before we get to a long list of address, long list of arrests and updates, a quick uh, update on another auto accident, yet another crash on the Mountain Parkway. Um, in addition to the two that I recovered, or two that I covered on last night's program, in this case again. A couple of occupants, very, very fortunate. Fortunately for two girls from Litchfield, no other traffic was coming when they were traveling westbound in this exact spot, which we have seen many accidents in this exact spot, but no traffic like this in the oncoming direction. Fortunate for them, and of course any other motorist who may have been traveling in that direction after, after the driver of this truck lost control, the vehicle careened across the oncoming lane over the embankment and struck several trees that more than likely kept the truck from going into the rain-swollen creek, which could have presented a case or situation much, much different. It's another in a long line of accidents at this very location near the McGoffin Morgan County line. And this one, a non-injury accident, like many, not all, but many of the others, in which the driver and her passenger both refused medical treatment and transport from the scene. Roads were just a bit slick from some light precipitation that we had seen, and that, and possibly speed, are contributing factors to this morning's crash. To get high-speed internet on their state-of-the-art fiber optic network for all of your home and business solutions, or to watch TV without a contract on over 200 digital channels with superb quality, or stay connected with family and friends with 24-7 telephone service you can always depend on, contact Foothills Broadband today. Or just click on their link to the right to find out how they're working to provide the latest in communications at affordable prices with exceptional service at Foothills Broadband. Several arrests to bring you this evening. I've got a couple that we'll cover now and a few more that I hope to have at least some more details on one in regards to a Sagersville man arrested on rape and sodomy charges, a victim under the age of 16. I'll have those reports in a few moments. Right now, a couple of other reports, including an update on a man who has now been ordered held on a $10,000 bond in relation to a case that we've been following for days and the arrest of another man who has since bonded out of the Big Sandy Regional Detention Center on charges of receiving stolen property terroristic threatening and menacing for threats or remarks he made towards a local law enforcement officer. First off, court records that I have today indicate that the man which was sought after by the McGoffin County Sheriff's Department for days and then captured and taken into custody last Friday, as I told you, has now had a bond set at $10,000 and more charges are still pending in the case of Nick Patrick, who was found to be in possession of a side-by-side -side full of items that were stolen from a Reed residence and the Carver Church as well. He's still being held in the Big Sandy Detention Center on receiving stolen property less than $10,000, but that's the single count thus far and still more expected to be filed. And once again, we found out today his bond set at $10,000 and he is still being held in the Big Sandy Jail. In another McGoffin County Sheriff's Department citation signed by Sheriff's Deputy Jonathan Holbrook, he detailed the arrest of a McGoffin County man, a former candidate for a sheriff, saying that in his citation, Holbrook had gone to the residence of a Darren Gullett to question him about the whereabouts of an ATV that was stolen from a close family member. And he says upon that questioning, Gullett admitted to the officer that he was the one who indeed had taken the four-wheeler and then sold it to a friend, the citation says, in an effort to pay his child support. Holbrook notes that Gullett wasn't in custody at that time, but he was read his Miranda rights thereafter and taken into custody to be arrested and charged with receiving stolen property under $10,000. He also notes in this police citation that during that process, Gullett made several comments and statements that his relative wouldn't find this, 
the ATV, the stolen four-wheeler, unless the charges were dropped. Thus, he was taken to the Big Sandy Jail and lodged on that charge, plus two others. A separate uniform citation uh, filled out at the same time or after that incident of arrest says that as Holbrook was escorting Gullett from the Sheriff's Department to the jailer's vehicle behind the Sheriff's Department, that as they were walking down the steps, Gullett turned to the deputy and said, quote, I'm just going to go ahead and tell you if you hit me, I'm going to kill you. Holbrook advised him that he had just threatened a police officer, to which he reportedly said, I don't care if you hit me with your stick, I will do it. And thus he was additionally charged with terroristic threatening in the third degree and menacing, and for all those charges was held and has since been released on a $5,000 bond. More headlines in a moment. Indeed, a lot happening. So much that I've got about another week's worth of announcements that I've put off to the side because they really don't come into play until well, next week or a little later. But nevertheless, a lot happening on tonight's McGoffin Farm Bureau community calendar, starting off with a couple of very special birthday wishes. Indeed, a happy birthday, a happy 63rd birthday, it says, to wish to Bonnie, to Bonnie Ingram. Love your sisters, family, and friends. Uh, and a couple of nieces and nephews who think you're really, really special. Happy 63rd birthday to Bonnie Ingram. Happy, happy birthday. And I've got birthday wishes going out to this young man, a now 11-year-old, Deshaun Nichols. Deshaun, happy birthday from Emma and Papa, all your siblings, and a whole lot of family and friends who wish you the best, too. Happy, happy 11th, Deshaun Nichols. Be sure, if you can at all, and support Operation School Shoe Fundraiser, raising funds for the school shoes to be purchased for our students. Seven bucks for a big soup bean dinner that's going to be made this Friday. That's right. You can call and order. You can eat in with them at the Lakeville Baptist Church. They will deliver from 11 till 2. You can call 792-0092 or the church the day of 349-6300. You can order before or the day of. I'll remind you about it the rest of the week. The Living Water Pentecostal Church is having a big yard sale, a church yard sale, but it's going to be at the McGoffin County Water Department parking lot. That's there on Parkway Drive, and it's going to be this Saturday from 9 till 4. A whole lot to see and buy and support the Living Water Pentecostal Church having a big church yard sale in front of the McGoffin County Water Works Water Department this Saturday. And a reminder that sweet potato slips are available. They're taking orders for them at your McGoffa County Extension Service, where they're also having a beginner's sewing workshop. It starts this coming Wednesday, and they will meet for the next several Wednesdays for six weeks. Every Wednesday, the class is limited to just 12 participants, so you got to call and register early. And you can call that same number to find out more about 4-H camp. It's going to be held June the 6th through the 9th. Call your McGoffin County Extension Service, 349-3216. I've actually got another one, I think, from the Extension Service and another announcement or two. Let me take you to a quick commercial break, and I'll pick up the rest of your calendar in just a second. All right, back to your calendar announcements. I found the one I was looking for. I knew I had it in there somewhere. And I also found this one just in for today, Picking and Grinning. That's right, they're back at it. Kearney Free Will Baptist Church invites you, uh, as does Pastor Butch Whitaker, to join them for some more Picking and Grinning this Saturday, April the 1st at 7 o'clock. And a little later on down the road, but anytime I have time to help these guys, we so wish to do so. Come and support the Whiskers or Wags bunch with the... Rockin' Barkin' Barbecue, their fifth annual event, a fundraiser at the Paintsville Country Club, set for Saturday the 8th, 6 to 10 that evening, an amazing barbecue meal, all you can eat, all the fun you can stand. Tim Elkins and Troy Burchett will be performing as well, a lot of entertainment, so be sure and put that on your calendar. And here's that other announcement that I knew I had from the McGoffa County Extension Service. This one's pretty neat. Now, this one's also one of those kind of first-come, first-served deals because space is limited. But backyard bluebird habitats. Create your own habitat for your backyard bluebirds on Tuesday. This is not until April the 18th, but like I said, only a limited number of spots are available. So we're getting this out early so you can call and get your name in. It's at the County Extension Office, and along with your County Extension agent, Courtney Jenkins, and special guest, Bill Gordon, uh, they're going to help you make free bluebird nesting boxes in this workshop. This is for kids and adults as well. You'll learn about the fascinating creatures and build your own nesting box to take home. 
I know I've said it twice, but once again, space is limited. Same number applies, 349-3216. And for announcements like these for your church, group, organization, or birthdays and anniversaries, this is how you get them on the show. Turning to obituaries, we learned that services were held Monday for Harold Robert Hamilton, 91, of Sagersville, who passed away on the 23rd. He was survived by his wife, Laureen Hamilton, and sons Bobby, Ron, Jonathan Hamilton, and Brian McDaniel, as well as daughters Patricia Reed and Sandra Hamilton. Eva Lee Bailey Moore, 59, of Royalton, passed away on yesterday's date, preceded in death by her husband, Birchall. She survived by son, Johnny Moore, and daughters, Melissa Wallen and Bobby Sue Wallace. Visitation is going to be after 6 o'clock tomorrow evening and after 10 o'clock on Thursday and all day Thursday and up until services start Friday morning at 11, all from the Sagersville Funeral Home. And 76-year-old James William Porter of Half Mountain Road passed away yesterday. He survived by sons William Cleve, Ryan Keith, Robbie, and Stevie Porter, daughter Jamie Lee Porter, and stepdaughters Sandra Jordan, Penny Jordan, and Sheila Ferguson. Visitation will start after 6 o'clock tomorrow evening, continue throughout Thursday, and up until services that will begin Friday afternoon at 1, all from the McGoffin County Funeral Home. Several of the details are limited given the age of the victim and the nature of the arrest. We're still hoping to gather some more information about how he was apprehended. He was actually arrested by Kentucky State Police Trooper Billy Hall on a Sagersville Police Office warrant. Scotty Reisner was taken into custody on charges of rape and sodomy, both in the third degree. Citations have yet to been filed with the clerk's office on behalf of investigative and arresting authorities, but what we have been able to learn thus far is that there was a case that was opened up after a complaint was answered by Sagersville Police Officer Jeremiah Watson, who responded to, I believe it was the Allen Drive area, to respond to a call on behalf of concerned parents in response to sexual contact that was alleged between 26-year-old Scotty Reisner and a victim under the age of 16. Per the investigation done by Officer Watson, he did obtain an arrest warrant in the name of Scotty Reisner for two counts, rape in the third degree and sodomy in the third degree, both related to a victim or child under the age of 16. He was served with that arrest warrant in the last 24 hours by Officer Billy Hall of the Kentucky State Police. Uh, there might also be some uh, other details about that arrest that are still pending. We'll be following up on this report later, but he was still, as of airtime, jailed in the Big Sandy Regional Detention Center where he was uh, expected to be given a bond or not in his first court appearance, which had not happened as of airtime. We're still reaching out to authorities and officers involved with the investigation and hope to know more at a later time. Jail records also indicate, however, that a McGoffa County man accused of cruelty to animals as well as assault and criminal trespassing in the third and fourth degrees, respectively, has been lodged in the Big Sandy Regional Detention Center and a bond posted at $1,000. This for events that were detailed in arrest reports filed on behalf of the McGoffa County Sheriff's Department in relation to an altercation that I covered last week that involved several individuals, two of which were already arrested on the same charges. Usually was the last to be arrested. The charges relate to an altercation that took place last week, or actually two weeks, I believe it was, in McGoffin County. The cruelty to, cruelty to animals charges centers around usually being accused by the victims of stabbing two pit bulldogs at their residence, one which died at the scene and had to be put down actually by authorities and one which was taken to a vet and will recover after receiving stitches from his stab wounds or its stab wounds. He was lodged in the Big Sandy Jail as of the last 24 hours and was still there as of airtime. Now on to the end of the show, that is, at least with your Licking Valley RECC outlook, which has a little more of the same. It's going to be a rather active pattern for, well, the foreseeable, I don't want to say indefinite future, but it could be a while. I topped out today at 65 here at the newsroom. We had a lot of clouds, very little sun, if any, and that's a big part of it. 
We will see mostly cloudy skies tonight. Uh, some light drizzle out there that's not even showing up on the radar. That will be the most you'll see in the form of precipitation for the rest of the evening. Otherwise, just mostly cloudy with some patchy fog moving in uh, after midnight and 1 a.m. and up through the morning hours. 48 degrees is where we'll fall to for tonight's low. Tomorrow, another day around 65, but it's going to feel a bit nicer because we're going to have a little more sun in the picture and above. Your Wednesday looks pretty nice. 65, partly sunny with a calm wind becoming north northeast around five miles per hour or so in the afternoon and that's it temperatures just below the 50 degree mark under partly cloudy skies tomorrow night so dry and calm midweek and uh, that's one of the few days that i'll be able to say dry and calm in your forecast as far as a totality is concerned some dry spots maybe in a few times thereafter thursday we'll start off the next round of showers and thunderstorms a slight chance early between noon and two those chances start to increase say from 30 percent early to 60 to 70 percent by late that night mostly cloudy can't rule out a thunderstorm or two thursday evening afternoon and evening as well with showers also likely after 11 they're going to continue to roll right on and into your friday for at least uh, the first half of it or so. Showers, thunderstorms possible after 11 in the morning, 67, 68 degrees for daytime highs on your Friday. Still can't shake about a 40% chance of showers by Friday night. And then here's another dry day, or maybe even two in your forecast, a bit cooler on your Saturday. Yeah, that system's going to put some colder air in here and knock things down to close to 60 degrees but partly sunny partly cloudy and a nice dry first half to your weekend that will be followed by right now i think a dry second half as well temperatures as we see skies go from partly to mostly sunny will climb 68 on your sunday 47 for nighttime lows mostly sunny and only a few clouds above sunday night and that will be setting us up for the next round of showers that will start off at the first of next week. Yep, Monday, right around 70 degrees, and another shot, a good shot of some showers, maybe some more spring thunderstorms as well. And that pattern will just start all over and roll right on. And that's it for tonight. I feel like we're just getting started with all the news we're still working on to get out before the end of the week. And it's just indeed Tuesday, so we hope to see you back here tomorrow night after what I hope is the rest of a wonderful evening. For now, thank you for watching, and good night.